This is my personal rig. Let's talk about it. So a couple of months ago, uh, the gaming rig that I had uh, and that I used pretty infrequently was actually my 2013 uh, Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, it was sufficient, you know, for my needs at the time, I guess. It actually could run things like uh, Battlefield 4 at medium resolution at, you know, 35 frames per second. It, it was a moderately capable gaming device. Uh, it has a 750M uh, video card, discrete graphics card in it, and it worked okay. Um, I wasn't really into gaming. For a little while, I was into music production, and, um, you know, it, that really suited my needs better for, for that purpose. But uh, I guess a couple months ago, I just decided that because I had, you know, for the majority of my life, had a dedicated uh, PC, a tower PC that was capable of running games. I wanted to build another one. Um, so what I did was I did some research. Um, I went on PC parts picker. I started pricing some things out, read a lot of reviews and articles and whatnot. Um, and what I came up with was this rig. Um, something like this is, is certainly reasonable to, uh, to work towards. And I want to start with the case. Uh, the case is a Fractal Design Define R4. Now, when I when I looked at, at cases, um, this this is obviously is a very highly rated case. It's a couple years old. The design is a couple years old anyway, and um, I didn't really take into consideration that I might want to water cool this system in the future. Um, it has kind of become an issue because um, I do want to at some point. Put a 360 rad in my case, and uh, this this won't it won't cut it. Um, there's no room for a 360 rad in the Define R4 without some heavy heavy modifications. It's just easier to go and buy you know an NZXT uh, 440 or something along those lines. It's similar size, similarly good ratings, and uh, has room for that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, honestly, the Define R4 is a really good case. Um, I did buy it without the side window. Uh, I wanted to make my own side window. I didn't like the this the shape and the size of the window that came on the Define R4, so I actually bought the case without one. Um, this side window was made out of um, a, a, a tinted acrylic, so this is like a smoked acrylic. Um, I cut the window to size based on, uh, I wanted to show the, the whole area, just basically from the um, the beginning of the water cooling loop over to the edge without showing the drives and things of that nature. So it shows all the graphics card, it shows um, all the, obviously the hard tubing, the CPU, the custom cables, things of that nature. It's a bigger window than comes on this case normally and I think it came out great. Um, Paul's Hardware actually does a great tutorial on how to make these kinds of windows. Um, I had seen some other tutorials as well, and um, that information really allowed me to, to, to take on this project with confidence, and it, I think the result is great. Uh, the corners came out, I'd say, almost as well as I wanted them to. Um, this corner is nice and rounded. This corner, this, despite the, uh, the way this looks, this corner actually is nice and rounded as well. These are a little more squared off, um, but... Overall, I think the look of the case is, I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. Came out nice and level and square and even, um, all the way down the sides and the tops are even. Um, and the spacing over here, like leaving this empty, actually is uh, was done on purpose. So um, I wanna open up this side panel and uh, show you the insides. Okay, we got the side panel off here. And uh, the first thing I want to point out is, uh, you know, kind of similar to how I did the, uh, the side window modification, uh, another personalized mod that I did to the case is this. This is the PSU shroud. Uh, it's made out of uh, sheet metal, uh, basically just uh, zinc coated um, uh, steel. Uh, it's, it's a thin metal. It's something that I, that I, I mean, I bought it at Home Depot. Um, I, I took some measurements in the inside of the case where I, what I wanted to cover. I basically wanted to cover from power supply all the way over to the hard drive cage. 
And I want it to be something that, that would sit on its own uh, without having to have any auxiliary support. Um, but that was also something that was thin and that I could take out when I need to access the power supply. And this actually is not fixed in place. Like I, you could move it. Um, I could actually just kind of tilt this side up and pull it out of the case if I need to. Um, it is, uh, it's covered in uh, sheet vinyl. It's a matte black sheet vinyl. Um, and if anybody saw my setup tour video, you saw my Bondo spreader, and that's what I used to apply the sheet vinyl without bubbles. Now there were, I don't know if this is coming out in the video, but there are like some very small bubbles up at the top. Um, but other than that, I mean, everything came out really smooth and nice without any bubbles or anything like that. Um, I contacted a, uh, a company uh, called Do-It-Yourself Lettering uh, online to make me some fractal design uh, logos just to kind of um, have something to show off on this shroud through the side window. Um, these came out great. Um, I actually had an issue where one of them wasn't adhering right and DIY lettering sent me two free ones that, that I would recommend using them. The guy's name is Brad Handy. Um, he was very easy to deal with. Sent me sent me out some some new, uh, new uh, vinyl uh, right away. Um, but as you can see, um, I had a little bit of an issue with this L, um, and I haven't had a chance. This was me. This has nothing to do with Brad's work, but this is me putting this on, um, and this is kind of coming off here. Um, I need to replace this and. Unfortunately, it's very unlikely that I'm just gonna be able to replace the L, so I need to probably take off this whole thing and just re-adhere a new one. But like I said, thanks to Brad, I do actually have a couple of new ones. But uh, this was done because I, I really like the, the look of the of cases with PSU shrouds, and um, I wanted to, wanted to try to replicate that without you know buying a new case. So um, this seems to it seems to work. I think it's I think it looks pretty slick. It really cleans up the bottom of the case. Um, this, uh, the power supply that's in there is a Thermaltake Tough Power uh, TPD 060, uh, 0650M, um, 650 watt semi modular uh, gold power supply. Um, I, I eventually like to move to something like a, um, a Corsair 1000i um, just because I, I know that I'm going to end up having to expand the system. Uh, additional water cooling components, maybe another video card, additional hard drives. Having the additional power um, is probably going to be something that I'll need at some point in the future. For right now, the 650 gold is actually works great for me. Uh, I'm only drawing somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 watts total right now with this system, uh, maybe 500 watts under load. So I'm well below uh, the 650 watts that this is producing, uh, and it's not it hasn't been an issue at all. Um, so, but uh, that's what I you know, like I said initially there were. Maybe there were some budget concerns, so I kind of, and I wanted a gold or platinum power supply just for power efficiency, so I went with the thermal take unit. It's, it's been really good for me so far. Um, so moving just back to the heart of the system, this is the Gigabyte GA Z170HD3P motherboard. Now, I didn't really put in a lot of thought as far as um, expandability specifically of the motherboard when I chose it. Um, the motherboard itself has great reviews on Newegg. It was only like a hundred and uh, I don't know, maybe like 120 bucks at the time of purchase. It's a Z170 board, so it allows for overclocking, um, and uh, you know er it's functioned great for me so far. The the BIOS is very clear, easy to work with. I always like Gigabyte's BIOS. Um, but the only problem is that it does not. It's not SLI compatible. Um, it has multiple PCIe uh, uh, X16 slots, but if you populate them both, um, they function at uh, X4 instead of X8. So uh, SLI gaming is not really an option with this board. And it was not made for that, it was not marketed for that. That is completely my fault and not Gigabyte's fault at all. Um, I mean, spending an extra $20 on a board will get you basically the same board with uh, uh, gaming features that'll allow for SLI, um, but you know it has four RAM slots. It has the it it's an uh, LGA eleven fifty one, so it houses my uh, sixty six hundred K. And um, I mean it, it, the layout has been really good. 
I really like the fact that Gigabyte includes um, for the uh, uh, the front header actually comes in like a, a, a plug that you you put all of the uh, the front header pieces into it and you just plug the, 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 the you plug the plug into the motherboard instead of having to uh, install each piece individually with, which ends up just being a pain especially I have big hands it's hard to do um, but you know all the wiring um, is I like that it's located all on the bottom or all along the side um, so that you don't have wires like running crisscrossing across the motherboard um, so the I mean gigabyte motherboards are always good um, and you know I don't have any complaints so like I mentioned before this is uh, Intel i5 6600k uh, it's a skylight price processor um, right now I have it overclocked to 4.2 on uh, stock voltage so it's it could definitely get pushed further I know uh, that I've read plenty of articles and forum posts where people have these up even as high as 4.7 4.8 gigahertz this is this if you don't need hyper threading for things like I guess streaming I don't stream um, you know this this processor is a beast it, it overclocks like crazy it runs really cool it's very power efficient uh, I've got really really nice benchmarking scores so far with this processor um, it's really not like anything I've had before um, because the last system that I had built was actually uh, an AMD system and while I was happy with it um, you know I was, was always kind of envious of the of my friends with Intel chips because they always seem to perform better even though they were clocked lower I think there's just you know the, the efficiency of the uh, of the manufacturing process is just uh, excellent so um, 6600k uh, you know, you could still get them right now for, you know, 240, 250, something along those lines. Uh, I know the 6700K because of how um, how quickly they've been selling, they've been marked way up. They're over 400 dollars now on Newegg. Um, you know, and that's not what the MSRP is. The MSRP on those is like 350 bucks. So you know, it's starting to get a little scarce. Maybe the holidays, people buying them up. But uh, you know, the, if you if like I said, if you don't need the hyper threading, the 6600K is an excellent choice. Um, and to pair with it, we have 16 gigs of uh, G Skill uh, Ripjaw 4, six, uh, the two times eight gigabyte sticks. Um, it's DDR4 2400. Um, it, the motherboard supports up to I believe 3200, and um, but the 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 memory that was 3200 speed at the time that I purchased this was was almost double the price of this set. Um, I mean, I have this kit running at 2400, um, and it seems to be doing a fine job. Um, I've always kind of been a fan of G skill memory. I think it's it's um, uh, you know while while a lot of people have it, it is still kind of underrated. It, it's definitely solid. Um, and right here, this is the MSI. Uh, GTX 980 Ti. Um, it is a factory overclocked 980 Ti. It is not reference design. It has a custom PCB. Um, comes with a really slick back plate, um, the twin frozer cooler, um, which keeps, I mean, even though I do plan to water cool it in the future, the twin frozer cooler does a fantastic job of keeping this, this cool under load. I did add another system fan up here that blows directly across it, um, which I think definitely helps. But um, even without that fan, um, this was certainly running a lot cooler than I had expected. Uh, I mean, it is a beast of a, a card. It, I'm, I'm able to play most games um, at 4K. Um, I mean, if not 4K, I'm running them 1080p. I'm running them at 1440p at ultra settings, um, and everything looks great. Um, Getting a second one of these might be a little bit overkill, so having the board that doesn't support SLI at this point is not really a problem for me. I, you know, I may consider it in the future, but uh, right now it's certainly not needed. Uh, I have these custom cables here. Um, these are from Ice Mods here and here. Um, I have the uh, the motherboard six pin, but because the radiator and the fans block it back there, uh, I haven't installed it yet. When I reconfigure my water cooling setup, I'm going to install the six pin and hopefully use some of the um, the Scythe uh, slipstream fans that I uh, talked about in my setup tour video. 
uh, to, to reduce the profile here and so that you could see back and see that, uh, that custom cabling. But I ordered these from Ice Mods. They took maybe two weeks to come in uh, because they do have to do the, the, you know, they sleeve each cable individually and they're, they're shipping them from Iceland. Um, but they they're, they look great. Um, you can get to choose like your colors and your sequences of colors. You can pick from any number of colors. Um, and uh, I they, I think they're they're fantastic. They really include, they really kind of uh, bring out all the colors of your setup. Like my theme is red, white, and black. Like basically everybody's theme but you know you could choose the sequencing of the colors here and I wanted to I wanted it to look this way it's similar to the way this looks um, the the 24 pin this is a little bit out of whack here um, when I when I did the cabling I actually didn't <clears throat> take into consideration that I'd have this pipe running straight across here and as you can see it kind of gets in the way uh, it blocks two of the red cables but you know I mean such is life I suppose um, this is the EKL240 kit um, with hard piping. So what I did was I bought the 240 kit, which comes with the pump, comes with the reservoir, comes with the radiator and the fans, and it comes with soft tubing and uh, compression fittings. Oh, it also comes with the CPU block. Um, I use this, the compression fittings and the soft tubing to make a drain, which is back there. You really can't see it, which is kind of the point. It's kind of hidden and out of the way. Um, but the hard tubing, I wanted the look, I wanted the, you know, I wanted the 90 degrees, I wanted everything to be straight and clean. I'm not, uh, I'm not entirely satisfied with this tubing. I'm going to redo it probably after the holidays. Um, I plan on putting uh, water cooling for my GPU, um, another radiator in the system, and I'm going to take this, this is 16 millimeter tubing, I'm going to take this down to uh, 12 millimeter tubing, make it a little thinner, a little more clean. I think I'm a little bit better now at bending the tubes, so uh, I'm not going to have issues. Like I don't know if the video can show, but like there's some rippling on the back side of this tube and the back side of this tube. So hopefully I can do it a little bit better. Um, but I think this actually looks pretty good, and it keeps the temps way down. Uh, my CPU is like under 100. I was running eight to 64 for a half hour, um, you know, the other day, and just as a just as a test after I installed all the water cooling and uh, I mean my CPU didn't go above 46 degrees so I mean that's pretty crazy and it's an overclock CPU uh, so as far as storage I have a uh, Toshiba Q series Pro SSD and a Western Digital blue one terabyte drive uh, I'm gonna upgrade the storage it's nothing special right now uh, the the Toshiba drive is actually super super fast so I'm getting over 500 each way on the on the Toshiba the Western Digital, I mean, it's a physical hard drive. It's gonna, it's just for mass storage. It does its job. Um, but what I want to end up doing is putting a Samsung 950 Series Pro M.2 um, in the M.2 slot um, because those are those those are crazy crazy fast and um, potentially uh, an Intel 750 Series SSD as well. Um, but you know, we'll see how that how that goes and uh, see what I get for Christmas, I suppose. Um, I don't know if you could really see, but I do have an optical drive installed. Um, it's an old optical drive that I had. I figured I would just throw it in the system. I don't actually have it hooked up right now. Um, I had um, power and, and uh, SATA, drive, uh, SATA cables going to it, and I just disconnected them. I, I'm not going to use this drive. I don't really need it right now, but I, I didn't take it out of the case in, ca in case for some reason I needed it. I mean, it is there. Um, it doesn't really distract from the look of everything. I mean, when I have the front panel on, there's a bar covering this anyway, and you really can't see it, even if it's in there. Um, but, you know, nobody uses an optical drive anymore. I mean, everything comes on flash drives or, or you just download it. Um, so, you know, so long optical drive. You've, you've, been, you've been good to me, I guess. Um, but that's about it. Uh, this is my system. Um, Leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button uh, or the like button, and uh, tell me what you think. You know, would you have built it this way? Uh, do you have any suggestions for me, anything that I could change or add or, or anything like that? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but this, is, this has been Brian with S-Tech, uh, signing out.